loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. We are finally doing the studio tour. Thank you so much for waiting and being patient over the last few months while I get this video ready. It hasn't actually taken me that long to make this video. It's more just like my mental buildup of showing you guys my space. So thank you so much for waiting for that. Just to cover a couple of like context clues, the space that I am working in is about, about three and a half by four and a half meters. I'll pop on screen what that means for the folks in in the US. I moved into this space in 2018 uh, when we moved over to Melbourne. We currently live in a three bedroom house. My partner has an office, I have an office, and then we have our bedroom. The space has evolved quite a lot over that time and I do have a studio tour back from 2018. The studio has changed quite a lot and when I look at older videos the space is so empty. I like a maximalist full space. Well one, it really helps with the sound, and two, it just feels more homey when things are filled with stuff. But a good balance of filling up the space, but also not having too much stuff because that stresses me out. What currently resides in my studio is a packing station, a admin desk station, and a station for where I make my physical paintings, as well as a storage area. So I will have all the chapters down below if you just want to skip ahead, whatever. If there's anything in the video that uh, I haven't explained or you want to get for yourself, uh, comment down below. Otherwise, I should have everything roughly in the description box below as well. It is a whole room though so forgive me if I don't have absolutely everything in there because that would be one comprehensive list. <laughs> At the end of the video I'm going to chat about things that I want to change about this space. The reason why I'm making this video is so that you guys uh, can see what it currently looks like, how it's functioned for me over the last couple of years. I haven't really changed the space in the last two and a half years or so. I think I've been able to achieve a fair bit in that time with the humble space that I have so I'm hoping that it's some good inspiration for everybody out there who wants to make art full-time that it is possible when you have a dedicated space it doesn't have to be a massive warehouse studio circling back to what I was saying. At the end of the video, I do want to get your suggestions for how to improve the space. I've mentioned a couple of videos ago that I want to rearrange some things in the studio so it's more of a uh, encouraging space to make physical acrylic paintings because right now, as you guys will see, it's not the best place for me to make canvas paintings. So we'll get into that at the end, but uh, without further ado, let's get into the tour. So this is the front door in which I I enter and then here is the packing station uh, where I send off all of your orders. On the wall here I've got an art print by Reginald Peen. When I met up with him in New York a couple of years ago he gifted that to me and it's been one of my favorite pieces since. It is hand screen printed. Now the formation of what's on the wall here is not that intentional. It was more just everything on the wall here is kind of just placed by convenience rather than purposefully putting everything up. This back wall has been through a fair few different versions and you know in the future I would like to just style it a little bit better. Right now I just haven't really had that much time to you know work on styling and rearranging things in the studio but I'm hoping to do that in 2022. Let's go through them quickly. Uh, this one is one of my wall hangings. You guys might recognize it from the Kickstarter. This piece over here is a painting that I bought from Alison Bamcat, one of my favorite uh, working artists artist right now obsessed with pretty much everything that she outputs and she makes so many pieces so she's always feeding us. <laughs> this is actually butterfly wrapping paper but it's too good for wrapping paper and also it's actually quite thick for wrapping paper so I think Rel got this a couple of years ago as maybe a gift or something I'm not too I'm not too sure I can't quite remember and then the frame is from Ikea and then um, the last print over here is from my Kickstarter last year where I sold uh, some a different wall banner uh, one of the sun and then I also sold limited edition gold prints, gold foil prints. You guys might remember that. And then over here uh, is the sign that I use for cons. <laughs> it's a little bit scungy. I think a couple of years ago, you guys might remember me putting it all together. Just got it printed and put some foam core on the back and cut out the circle. It's okay. I feel like I would really like to upgrade the Zeke's Lunchbox sign to some kind of neon sign in the future. I think that would be really cool and official. Over on the corner here is one of my 
first plants that I got when I moved down to Melbourne. I've given it a fairly hefty haircut recently, just all the leaves down on the bottom half of it, I gave it a pretty intense haircut just to encourage some new sprouts. And now that it's spring, it's finally sprouting four new sprouts. So I'm very excited and um, proud of my little planty. Okay, so let's go through uh, the cupboard. Okay, so like I said, this is my packing station. It's not the best piece of furniture for packing orders. Really, I'd like to transition all of the desks and workstations to be at standing level. So something that's at like hip length, just because then it'll be a lot more ergonomic. Right now, I can't, you know, pack large amounts of orders, just a couple of orders. Otherwise, like I'm really hurting my back just because it is really low. It is a buffet made for a TV stand, so it really isn't like the most appropriate thing to pack orders with. I did buy it secondhand just because, uh, you know, I saw it on Facebook Marketplace. It was a good size. The color went with all my other furniture in here and, you know, I just needed another piece of furniture. I did choose it because I thought that these drawers were good for thin, flat things. So I've got my custom tissue paper here and then some other pink tissue paper at the back. Some packing slips that are completely outdated now that I print my shipping labels at home. I don't actually need this stuff so I'm actually going to return this to the post office soon. Here I've got you know my do not bend stickers, some other like novelty unicorn stickers, stamps, my address stamp over here. I also have a custom Zeke's lunchbox stamp, a date stamp for dating prints, small envelopes for stickers, ink pads for stamps, some thank you notes that I'm very low on and a couple of months ago No Issue sent me some free merchandise just to test it out and um, now I'm running very low on thank you cards. I don't really like the design of these. I also think they're too big for thank you notes. So um, I'm glad those are running out so I can order new ones. Here I've got some custom Zeke stickers uh, for packaging, some more envelopes underneath. And then under here I have my stickers. So I've got a sticker sheet here. This is the very last of these stickers. And once these are out, I won't be restocking them. So if that's something you're interested in, do it. Uh, these new holographic stickers that I got in from a sticker app, they sent me some samples as well, just to test them out. Also available on my store. And then these two pink sisters that I painted a couple of years ago. Some of my favorite paintings. And uh, again, available on my store. I'm running quite low on the circle stickers. Have a tiny bit more of the hexagonal ones, but once again, once all these stickers are out, I'm not restocking them. Let's get a little bit lower. This is where I uh, store all of my prints. <laughs> Pretty uneventful, to be honest. I don't have that many prints in stock right now. Pretty much for all of 2021. Sorry, it takes me a while to figure out what the year is. <laughs> I know I'm not alone in that. Uh, for all of this year, I haven't really been focusing too much on my store. That's why the prints are quite low. That being said, um, half of the prints here aren't even on my store, so, but uh, I'm hoping in the new year, I'm going to close down the shop for a little bit and reopen it with a brand spanking new uh, online store so I can focus a lot more time on on that and then everything here can finally be up on my store. Okay, so I'll close that. And then over here, just more packing stuff, completely unorganized and an absolute mess. You can see here, look, I didn't clean too thoroughly for you guys because I thought like, I think it's better for you guys to all see like what realistically is in all of these cupboards. So here, lots of like plastic sleeves for art prints, little plastic bags for back when I used to package uh, my own little sticker packs. In this box here, I have a bunch of pins that I'm also running low on, stiff envelopes and bubble envelopes. That box over there is just cardboard. This box over here are large A3 envelopes. Again, like really boring stuff. I'd like to reorganize this whole area in the new year as well. And then some cutting mats uh, down the bottom there. All right, let's move over to the next wall. 
Alrighty, so over here is where the where I spend the majority of my time. This computer and my Wacom Cintiq is pretty much the desk where I spend, I would say like 90% of my time in the studio. I will have all the details for everything that you see here. So all the tech, anything that's notable, I will pop um, a link for it in the description. But if there's something that's missing, please comment and um, I'll hopefully I'll be able to track it down for you. Okay, so over here, we've covered the plant. Here's just a little shelf unit that honestly is more decor than anything else. It did serve some functional purposes earlier in the studio. If you guys see my first studio tour in 2018, you'll you'll see it there. Uh, but right now it's purely decor. I'd like to rearrange it so it's a bit more functional and it's with this desk over here on the right. That way it can house a lot more actual art supplies and it's just a bit more functional. We will go through in detail what's on all of these shelves right now. Okay, so. The very top shelf over here, we've got my little Pelia that's bending um, and drooping like crazy, but at the same time, it seems to be quite happy. So uh, I might just let it go wild until we figure out what to do with it. This little planter here is from Kmart. If you guys are from Australia, you've probably seen it everywhere because <laughs> I seem to spot it everywhere in like lots of different homes. And then behind here is just a ice cream container with some washi tape inside of it. I think this was from Typo years ago. And then here is a little apple container with one single washi tape in it. You know, these two containers could be much more functional if they were closer to my uh, art desk, but for right now, they work. I like having, you know, some height at the top, just it works and visually is uh, more appealing than it is functional. Okay. My little pops. If you guys know any of these pops, <laughs> comment down below. So my requirement for collecting pops is, I don't like when the eyes are round like this. This one's a bit of an exception because it's a troll doll. <laughs> but you know, I like when the eyes are a little bit more obscured and not so cold and black and round. I find them a little scary when they're just black and round. But yeah, as you can see, Green eyes, multiple eyes, no eyes. This one again has a lid on it. So it just, for me, it doesn't look too creepy with the eyelids. And then let's go down a shelf. Over here is this bright pink uh, vessel that I've never really known what to do with. It's had plants in it in, in the past. Um, it also housed a bunch of gumballs or uh, bouncy balls that Rel and I used to collect whenever we would find um, you know, those old turnstile machines with like candy and gumballs in it. We would <laughs> collect those. This is the very first one that we got. It didn't have paint on it back in the day. Uh, and it's gotten foggy and dirty and yellowed and gross. <laughs> this was the first one that we collected and we thought it was such a funny dud. Like the whole, <laughs> the whole gumball machine had incredible bouncy balls, like amazing colorful neon ones. And then we got this dud and we thought it was absolutely hilarious. So ever since then, we've just been collecting them. Unfortunately, you know, I only kept the original one because it's the OG and all the others got really gross and melted because they've been in the sun for years. So unfortunately I had to part with a bunch of them. Uh, a Gudetama figurine that Rel got me. <laughs> uh, this prism that I use for photography reasons. It's pretty good and I have used it a fair bit in the past, but uh, I think it's a little small for a DSLR and I'd like to get a bigger one. At the back here is a plate that my niece painted for me, which I love. I think the colors are great. Uh, another vessel that Rel got me uh, for this birthday actually. And um, it was meant to house an orchid that he got me, but the orchid is just far too big for it. So I don't know, it's just here sitting here for now. This thing that's that cuts corners of paper, which is meant to be put away. And um, this is actually the only functional part. As you can see, it's right next to my desk. So it houses uh, notebooks that I uh, work out of regularly, paper clips, pens, cause all of this is just an arm's reach. Uh, a thermal roll for my printer. So this is my Dymo printer that I print 
out all of your shipping labels from. It's been a lifesaver. I love it. <laughs> it used to be over behind there. We, as you can see, the cords are all over the place and we'll get to this in a moment. It was just a mess. And then I've got some colorful rolls in the back there because I wanted to experiment with printing my own stickers. Not for selling purposes, just mostly for just uh, packaging decor. I wanted to make my own like do not bend stickers just so they're a bit more aesthetic. And over here, I think this is my favorite part of the shelf are my treasured troll dolls that I've had since I was a kid. Uh, this pink fluffy thing that is a light that I got from uh, a place in Newcastle uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, a couple of my crystals, which I think look really pretty on this tray. And then this uh, piece of artwork over here is by FED and uh, she does lots of plasticine and playful artworks. A Rubik's cube that I've never been able to solve. <laughs> Down the bottom here, some books. I don't really like having these books here. Uh, I'd prefer to have them with all the other books in the house. Uh, we are busting at the seams with art books, so they have to live here for now. These containers, I, uh, yeah, I think it's mostly like sewing stuff that I haven't been able to part with, like lots of beads, and then other miscellaneous like office things like hole punches and scissors. Kind of boring stuff, to be quite honest. All right. Let's move over to where I spend the majority of my time. This is the iMac that I do all the work that I do on. Definitely need to upgrade to a new iMac soon, uh, but I just got a new phone, so the new computer will have to wait until sometime next year. Hard drives over here, my prized possessions. If I had to leave in the middle of the night, you know I am sprinting to save these two very important boxes. Over here is just a little shelf to make my um, computer a bit taller. It's not ergonomic. <laughs> it's a little bit too tall for me. You know, it mostly just houses really annoying things like another hard drive. Uh, my GoPro, my blue light glasses. Like, again, I feel like it's good to show you guys these ugly drawers because if you have a nice drawer, you are nuts old tablet that's completely redundant now, a bunch of USBs, you know, all that like little tech stuff that's like frustrating to have and you just want to tuck it away. Um, as soon as I got this, it's been a game changer because like now I can just shove all those little things away. A very old mouse mat that's like a little mini carpet that I just got on eBay. Definitely need to upgrade. <laughs> Uh, to something a little bit more aesthetic and not so grungy and old. Same with my mouse. I'd like to upgrade to some new mice. If you guys have any recommendations for like cute tech stuff, please let me know, especially if they're from like a smaller company or um, especially with the mouse mats, if there's any like small creators, I'd love to get something a bit more unique and cool. Always looking for things that are just a little bit more spicy, especially for deskware, because desk stuff can get really oppressive very quickly. Moving over to my Cintiq. Um, I will put the details for this Cintiq in the description box, but I believe I got it like last year. It's been a game changer. I love it. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I would do the tarot card project without it, nor do I think I could do any like commercial jobs without it anymore. Up the top here are the remaining tarot cards that I need to make. The cord situation at the back here, I don't know. Again, guys, if you have any suggestions for how to like clean up these cords or if you are somebody who uses a desktop and a Cintiq, I'd love to see like what configuration you have. For me, this was kind of like a, I got the compute, I got the Cintiq, plopped it on and this is the solution I have. But if you guys have any suggestions for things that are a bit more um, cleaner looking, one, and two, ergonomic, please let me know. I am considering switching over to a standing desk. So yeah, if you have any suggestions of how I should arrange things, please, please let me know, because I am quite lost, to be honest. Lastly, I just have my Rode mic. Um, I use this a lot for voiceovers, but I would like to eventually use it just for regular videos because the sound on that is much better than the microphone that I currently have. And then this plant over here I got recently because there was a Monstera over here. <laughs> and if you guys live with Monsteras, you know those those plants are absolute machines and it completely outgrew this uh, corner. I think this spiky plant is doing well. And I also, I mean, it's already taking over this corner a bit, which is 
good and bad. This corner really does need a plant because it's like such weird dead zones. But yeah, that's, that's it. That is this wall. And we are moving over to, I think, my favorite part of the office. Like, it's uh, not only do I make like lots of fun physical media in, on this desk, but I think seeing all the art supplies and everything out and about, especially with the plant, I think it's fun and playful. So yes, this is the area where I make my little acrylic paintings as well as working on sketchbook stuff. I also have this rig here that I've made uh, a couple of maybe over a year ago now, just because I was using a really complicated rig before. Um, you can see that in my first studio tour from a couple of years ago. And I've upgraded it to this um, pipe the, this like metal pipe that I spray painted white and then I spray painted these little metal blocks uh, in the corners here. And that is my bird's eye view rig that you guys see. Um, I've also drilled in the top camera rig. It's super stable. I also got different legs for my desk as well. So everything is like rock solid and nothing wobbles. So if you're a artist and you want a better idea of how to shoot bird's eye view artworks that's what i have i've tried lots of different iterations but uh one you definitely need a solid desk and two a like rock solid rig it's very permanent but you know i'm i use it all the time almost weekly so uh it makes sense for me to have something that's permanent recently i've added my Oh my god, I always forget the name of this plant. If you remember what this plant is called, um, comment down below. Recently I've put this vine up which hides the cold, oppressive metal look. I did put fairy lights around it but the batteries run out all the time so I never use them. Yeah, the creepy vine is doing incredible here. I think the combination of this spiky plant and this vine makes this area look fantastic. <laughs> Plants make everything look great. Okay, let's get into detail and uh, look at the desk. First of all, let's start off with the ugly stuff. Here is my charging station. I hate when cords are on the floor, so I try and strap them to the desk as well as possible. This could use an upgrade, to be quite honest. I've been wanting to upgrade to a uh, bigger power board for a long time because I have to switch out lights often. And so I'm gonna do that in the new year. That's another thing I have to add to the to-do list. Down the bottom here is the is my scanner for paper works. During the pandemic, I had to buy my own scanner to uh, scan all the tarot cards because Officeworks was not open. It worked for a couple of months and it now just doesn't work. So <laughs> I don't know, now it's just e-waste. It's so wasteful. It really, it drives me nuts. Going up to the top of the desk. First of all, here are my photo lights that, you know, they're great functionally. I have actually never had any issues. I've never had to change out the bulbs. As you can see, these two light boxes are bright as hell. I bought them on eBay, I think for like 60 bucks and I've never had any issues with them. The only issue really that I have is that they are massive. They're great for work for sure, but I hate how much floor space they take up. I would like to at some point try and figure out if I can uh, strap them to the uh, metal bar that I have here. Surely I should be able to because I, I really hate how much floor space they take. The lamps actually really ruin um, the configuration that I want to have for this space. So we'll get to that towards the end. All right, let's look at the stuff um, on the desk. So salt lamp, uh, my pot plant over there in the corner, vessels. I don't, I don't know what I've used this forever. I think I need to move this to a different part of the house because it doesn't get any use here. <laughs> over here, some. Um, this is where I put like lots of camera gear stuff. So like lids for my camera, boring stuff that's small and bitsy that needs to be hidden away. Um, this bat sword that I got in Thailand, which was the inspiration for a bunch of the swords in my tarot deck. Some retired um, paint palettes that I would eventually like to hang up because I think they'd be cool to hang up as a decor item, but functionally they're too caked on <laughs> um, at this point. Color wheel, my current sketchbooks live here. Um, my tar the tarot cards that I use to reference for the project. So obviously my sample. And then in that black case there is the Rider Waite Smith <laughs> tarot deck. 
this tattoo tarot deck that is everywhere. Again, I will link that down below. And here is this old Digimon lunchbox that I've had for maybe 20 years or so. I think I bought it at an op shop at a thrift store when I was like a teenager. And even then when I was a teenager, Digimon was already vintage. So that's how freaking old this is. <laughs> Some more paint palettes that def desperately need a wash. Paint brushes. An old, 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 old work from my partner back when he used to do rugged Australiana work. Uh, a cicada that I got over in Thailand. This Beatles tin that I got in Vegas for the um, Cirque du Soleil uh, Beatles show. Lots of travel stuff here actually, that's kind of cool. A Giant Greedo that I got from Target years ago. I got this when the very first new Star Wars ma was made, the one with Kylo Ren. So maybe like 2016, when did that movie come out? They were doing lo lots of like promotional old school characters and Greedo is my boy. So <laughs> um, I had to get it. I had to get it. It was 20 bucks. Like now it would be really, really hard to find. I knew that it would be like, an important purchase. <laughs> you probably see Greedo in, he's like a staple in these uh, videos now. Some more paint, um, gesso and white titanium. All of my brushes and pencils over here. Watercolor tins over there. Erasers and refills for pen for paces. In here I just have more erasers. In Australia we call them rubbers. <laughs> but I know in the US you call rubbers a totally different thing so I'm gonna say eraser. And just above the workstation here I have three vinyls that I collected and thrifted from over the years. Never actually listened to any of these vinyls because I've never had a uh, vinyl player. I just got them because I like the art. I think the art is uh, absolutely hilarious and I feel like this one's very on brand. Uh, this one, I love just the psychedelic nature of it. And in this one, I absolutely love her hair and the colors in it. I feel like, you know, all together they fit in this space really nicely. And then here is the worst corner. This is the dead corner. A couple of years ago when I did acrylic paintings a lot more regularly, that's where I would put my easel. Um, the easel's in a different part of the house right now. So right now this corner is my storage corner. <laughs> the stuff down the bottom is things that I need to donate. This is a stepladder that needs to go back in storage. Behind here is a giant canvas that I've been desperate to paint for forever. Over in this corner over here is a wall hanging that I bought in Bali. I really like images of psychedelic culture. They influence my work quite a bit. I think people like to conflate my work with being part of, you know, hippy dippy psychedelic uh, artworks, but I'd like to think that I'm more inspired by that rather than being part of it. That being said, I do love like earnest, psychedelic, trippy art. <laughs> I love the 70s. I love the early 70s. I like psychedelic culture. I like psychedelic art, as you can see. That's why I like the yellow submarine tin over here. If it weren't for this wall hanging to fill up the space, it would be such a dead, ugly corner. But right now it really fills up the space and I think it looks good in videos. Moving on. We are almost towards the end, you guys. Let me move the de <laughs> let me move the chair. All right, the hell closet. A couple of years ago, maybe a year ago, I put this like uh, streamy tinsel stuff just because in videos, because I film in this particular corner, I needed some more visual interest in the background. So that's why I put them up. So it kind of disguises the doors a little bit. It's funny, like I feel like everything in my house is always a temporary solution, but then it just stays there for forever. Surely <laughs> everybody else can relate to that, right? Like you're always like, oh, I will change that later and find a better solution for it, but then you just end up keeping it. <laughs> okay, let's do a little lightning round of the stuff that's in here because it's not that interesting. Mostly, you know, it's all things that are just like, it's mostly things that are just ugly or like personal belongings. So it's a combination because the studio is in my house, uh, it is a combination of personal things, like a suitcase <laughs> and uh, photo albums, but then also I have a bit of work stuff in here too. So as you can see over here, I have some wall hangings. Uh, these will eventually go up on my shop um, once the tarot card project 
is in people's homes and all the people who back to the Kickstarter. Uh, so you guys watching, once you guys receive your orders, then all the samples I will pop up onto the online store. Sometime next year, I'll do a big studio clear out because there are lots of like little samples and stuff that really need to find new homes so they're not just wasting away in my uh, storage area. I'm not gonna go too in depth in this area because again, it's really, I'll go. Behind here, a bunch of canvases. I'd like to make a video soon, brainstorming what I wanna do with all the canvases. So that'll be coming up soon. Over here is my sewing machine that never gets any use. And every time I move, I'm like, should I sell this thing? I never know. This like blob of stuff over here are all of my, original paintings actually are just in that folder there because they're all large a3 that's kind of the only place that they really can sit up i have reorganized this kind of recently so this is kind of like the best it's ever gonna get to be quite frank uh up the top more canvases the box for my imac a completely empty storage container that I'm sure I could use if I rearrange the house a bit more. And then um, tripod, tripod case, other oh, crap, just crap. <laughs> Stuff that you hate and you just put in storage and you're like, I do need this, but it's ugly, so I'm gonna put it away. Okay, boxes, bunch of photo albums. In that orange box over here is brushes, lots of memorabilia, like personal memorabilia. So like uh, magazines I've been featured in, old yearbooks from high school, receipts for my business. Again, you know, the sort of stuff that's like, I don't know what to do with this stuff. It needs to be stored away. Middle shelf, lots of camera gear, um, some sewing stuff, a bunch of my art journals. Um, I am considering doing like one massive video where I go through all of my art journals in one video. It'll be a combination of just like flicking through and some commentary. That'll probably be out sometime in the new year. Personal documents and then some more like more shipping stuff. I do think like this area needs another cull. But then more than that, I really just want to paint all the canvases that are hidden throughout this whole room. We'll make a video about that soon. All right, you guys, that is the full tour. Let me know if you have any particular areas that you um, really like, any little treasures that uh, you thought were cute. Now, let's head into what I wanna do to my studio space in the future. I am totally lost with what configuration I should have with the space. As I mentioned, you guys saw the dead corner. And also there's actually two dead corners because of where the lights are positioned. If you guys can suggest maybe some lighting solution so the lighting doesn't take up so much floor space, that will make a really big difference in me being able to cram um, some of the desks together and therefore have more space for a painting area. But really what I need in this space is what I currently have plus a painting easel area. Uh, ultimately, I think I wanna have two easels up and then also have a place where I can put um, all of my paint on display. Preferably, I would like to completely avoid taking up floor space and take up all the vertical space. If you guys can help me figure out that configuration, that would be really, really helpful. I think what I'm asking for is a little ambitious because it's actually a really small space for how much I need it to function, but this is my option for now. So anyway, uh, if you guys could help me out, I'd really appreciate it. And then uh, in 2022, we can make that happen. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in next week's video. It is another studio vlog and lots of art making. Um, I go to some cool art experience and live theater stuff. So uh, next week's video is gonna be really fun and I will see you then. Bye.